Welcome to the jungle. I am Tyler Fionn, Fire Erzberger, joined by friend and colleague Emily Rand. We are going to be discussing the open position of the Team Liquid jungle position. As we've previously mentioned in other videos and on our ESPN.com site, it looks like Alfari is coming to Team Liquid, about to sign a multi-year deal, which means that Broxa, Mr. Broxa himself, sadly, seems to be out the door for Team Liquid, which leaves open a jungle spot, which must be filled by a domestic player. As we know, Alfari and Core JJ would be taking up the import slots for Team Liquid. Emily, a domestic slot is open. There's been murmurs of who Jensen wants. There's been murmur, very heavy rumors coming in from Jacob Bull himself on who it's going to be. Who do you think the fifth man to put together this NA Super Team will be? So the most rumored name is Santorin. And instead of talking about whether this is going to happen or not, um, I'm just going to talk about how well I think he would fit yeah. on this team. Because, again, these are all rumors, and I don't like to mm. have people look at these videos and take it as fact. Yeah. So this yeah. is not something I know. I just want to talk about him as a jungler. Um, so the first thing is that he is one of the few players, uh, one of the lucky few who was automatically grandfathered in when they first mm. did the interregional movement policy. And so um, that means that he actually has any residency, mm. which makes a huge difference. Um, the big sticking point for me in terms of Santorin's personality, uh, and Santorin is someone who just as a, as a player who I interview, someone that I appreciate and like very much, he seems like uh, a really good person and I also know that COVID definitely and he's talked about this publicly but um, you know COVID was definitely really stressful for him to deal with being separated from uh, his family and his girlfriend was, was definitely stressful for him to deal with uh, as it would be anybody but it, uh, he was one of the more open people about talking about it right mm -hmm. um, and how much of a difference it made going from playing in his bedroom to mm -hmm. even for finals to playing in China uh the thing with Santorin as a jungler uh is that I think he was probably my I would say he was the strongest jungler in North America across the entirety of the year and yes I'm I'm including blabber in that um in terms of what I mm -hmm. I value in a jungler uh, I think he performed really well um I think he still has some tendencies that again, if he played in another region would be punished and then he would probably subsequently learn from them. Um, and I think he saw some like early game pathing to work on. However, uh, I, I value Santorin like incredibly mm -hmm. highly. And if this is the pick that Jensen wants, as I've mm -hmm. talked about previously, I think Jensen has been the best performing mid in NA. And I think one of the things that we haven't seen from him yet is really, really, really strong communication with his jungler in a more symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. than um, just having a really strong mid laner and a really strong jungler and having them play side by side. I don't know if Santorin would do that for him, but if he does have a voice in making the team and that's the person mm -hmm. he wants, um, I, if, if Santorin did join the team, I would be mm -hmm. looking to see how well that relationship could develop. Mm -hmm. uh, on the rift and how they'd be working together, especially since we never know what's coming for the jungle because mm. we got to change mm. it every year and no one wants it to be too strong. And it was really strong at this year's world. So, uh, you know, we don't know what's mm. coming, but I think we've seen Santorin play carry junglers. Mm. We've seen him play more tanky facilitators. Uh, I don't think he has a sort of champ pool mm. issue that you might have to worry about with other junglers. Mm. Uh, I think he's really smart. Mm. I think he's incredibly communicative. Uh, which mm. is something that you kind of need to be uh, as a jungler, especially mm. when you're talking about one of NA's weaknesses, mm. which is having their lanes communicate with their jungler, <laughs> vice versa, mm. uh, just from looking at the map state uh, mm. in an overall perspective. So, yeah, I mean, mm. if it's Santorin, I love that pickup mm. because I think he's really good. Uh, and the, the thing I'd be most curious about is to see how well he would communicate with with Jensen on the map, uh, especially since regardless of what the meta is going to be, the mid jungle communication and coordination is always just like super, super, super important. Um, what did you think of Santorin this year? Because I know you were a lot more high on Blabber. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I, I think Blabber and Centaurin are, are the two best native, or even not even native, just the best junglers in North America. But they are obviously they're two different styles. If if I'm going to this, if I was in this year's World Championship, I would have wanted Blabber there. I think Blabber, I think C9, even of how mental boom they had, uh, I think they were the team that fit this meta the best. I, if you're going for a hard carry jungler in the, the meta we just saw, you know, either, you know, either being proactive very early or just hard farming, I would have wanted Blabber. But for a super team like this, for a Jensen, Tactical, Core JJ, Alfari team, I want Santorin. I would pick Santorin on the scene over Blabber any day of the week. I want someone who is intelligent. I want someone who is even keel. I want someone who can deliver me 8 out of 10 performances every single game. On a team with Alfari, Jensen, Tactical, and Core JJ, you not need to be the Blabber of either hitting a 10 or a 5, depending on the game, right? You want... The consistent 8 out of 10. You want someone who's smart. You want someone who doesn't tilt under pressure. You want someone who can facilitate his lanes. A three-strong lane system that Team Liquid is looking to have. And I think Centaurin's the man for the job. Obviously, if he can build a rapport of of Jensen and those two could actually work together in tandem. And Jensen could find his partner finally. Find his bangy, so to speak. He's never had his bangy. He's yeah, never had if he if, if, if Santorin turned out to be Jensen's Bengi and he could find that partnership that he could work through and those two could click, this team could this team is scary. This team unlocks a whole different kind of level of scariness where this team now could go to a world championship and actually put fear into international teams. But even if that doesn't happen, I do think even if they don't have that perfect rapport. I think you want is someone like Santorin who's intelligent enough. Mm-hmm. And as you said, there, he's not perfect. He's not, you know, we saw some of his uh, liabilities at the World Championship where he was out jungled by a Karsa, someone you would compare him to of like these two junglers aren't the most hard carry junglers, but they are both intelligent and can fil- 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 facilitate their lanes. And Karsa kind of uh, sidestepped and kind of bullied him in the first game. Obviously, FlyQuest took a game off TS in the second. That was a bit more of a snowball situation where I don't think it was necessarily Centaurin, but Centaurin played really well at the World Championships, and I think if your Team Liquid, he's a free agent. Uh, there's a very dry pool of junglers in North America, domestic junglers you can really pick up. So I feel like if you're picking up Alfari and you're kind of setting yourself that Brox is out, I think they would have to be very confident they could make the best offer for Centaurin. Mm-hmm. And if it is there, and if Centaurin sees this. I think Santorin sees this as his best chance of going very far at Worlds. Uh, going from FlyQuest, where he was 3-3, three and three, he did very well on a team that you know I think went above the expectations for a lot of people, beating TES, uh, beating Unicorns of Love, uh, dominating them in the second game. I think Santorin could see this as, like, this is my time to finally be on a team that can go far in a World Championship or an MSI. And I really do hope it's Santorin, because I want, I think for this team, with three strong lanes, you want someone who can be that facilitator and who can be, you know, very communicative. You want someone yeah. who is, even if one of the lanes tilts and one of them falls over and there's going to be times where Jensen gets solo killed or Alfaro gets solo killed or Tattoo gets solo killed because they are, they are players looking to win lane. I think uh, Santorin's a player who can keep them calm, can, can set up the map, reset the map, make sure it doesn't snowball in the other direction. And I really hope it's Santorin. I think he's the perfect pick, but... Emily, let, let's try to like think of in a world where let's say FlyQuest keeps on the Centaur and like they pay him you know, a very healthy deal, or Centaur really wants to stay on FlyQuest. Is there any other option for the jungle pick? Is is That's it is, it, is it is it is it Centaur or Bus? Is it Centaur or Bus? Because they can't import Alfari and Cordy. They take the import slots. You know who else could they assign? Like Mike Young from the Dead. Like like who is coming over to take that spot? Or is it Centaur? Or this team kind of falls apart. It, it, there could be a very well situation where if it's not Centaurin, who is it? I mean, I don't think the team necessarily falls apart because based on draft, you could just kind of do hmm. uh, something that um, I think, <laughs> I mean, people people mainly uh, said that it was like the IG style where you basically just uh, draft super strong lanes and hmm. then push out. Um, and that's not to say that when IG won the championship, Ning wasn't the best uh one of the best junglers MVP the because MVP. like like actually despite the fact that he's been struggle life in the past few years he was one of the best junglers in the world at the time um I think if you have that kind of setup though to a point and again this is this is in North America right so it depends on what you're talking about to a point you can plug in a lot of players and all they have to do is be passable mm-hmm. because 
pushing lanes gives you a lot more agency as a jungler to do what you want, especially if you have a roaming support like uh, Core JJ, who it's really interesting because he started off his career as someone who was like lane or bust, and Wraith was the roaming support alongside him mm. for Ambition. Um, but over the course of his career, Core has actually mm. become a really strong roaming support. Mm. And uh, if you have a support like that who mm. is is a more jungle focused support and who is roaming with you, um, that also helps the jungler in addition mm. to pushing lanes. So I can't think of any names. Oh, like I there's two. There's two. There, there's two. It's like Smithy and uh, Medios. So those two. Oh, Medi- it's, I, both know, of those I two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of those guys, like Smithy and Medios, are both free agents. So those would probably be the backup plans. Wow, it's Smithy going there. back to TL. <laughs> yeah, I mean Jensen wants him back. Like it's not a thing of like it's not. Yeah, it, I mean, it I yeah. I don't think Ick Smithy is nearly as bad as the mm. NA community <laughs> thinks he is. So I, I think he's always going to be one of those people who can have insane games mm. just based on like his experience mm. as a jungler. There's always going to be mm. at least one game where he is just going to draw on pathing experience mm. and out jungle his opponent. Um, we saw it against yeah. hell this past yeah. year. Um, but yeah, actually, I I totally forgot about Smithy with the yeah. Animedios. That's kind of yeah. terrible. So so it's number one Centaur and with a bullet. Like he is by far the best choice. I think number two would be X Smithy. You go back to your old ways. Jensen and X Smithy already have a relationship. It wasn't mm-hmm. again. It wasn't. He wasn't his bengi, but it wasn't terrible. It wasn't. Yeah, like, no. I th- it was better than Broxa. I think overall, like their partnership was better than Broxa and Jensen. I think Smithy and, and Jensen worked fine together. I think they have a respect for each other. Jensen wanted Smithy back, so it wasn't a, a, an ordeal of like him wanting Brox over at Smithy. I think that would be a fine placement. And then I think Medios as well as a third place. Medios, a very smart player, very experienced player. Mm-hmm. He knows what it takes to win. Obviously, we don't know. We, we've seen less of him because you know he was on 100 Thieves, thrown in 100 Thieves Academy. Uh, we saw a lot more of Smithy. So I think, obviously, Centaurin 1, Smithy 2, Medios 3. Would you sign off on that? Yeah, actually. Mm. Although, it's weird. Sometimes I think Medios has, like, higher highs than yeah. Smithy, But I think Smithy overall is mm. the more... Like, familiarity. Again, if you're, it's comfort. It, yeah, there's that familiarity. Mm. And also, if you're looking at, like, again, if mm. you're setting it up as we're playing out of any of these three lanes and we're just going to have really strong pushing lanes... Uh, and, and we're going to try to focus on, like, leaning as a point of pushing up so that it gives more coverage to our jungler, then that is also something Smithy will be able to work with really, really well, actually, uh, in terms of tracking his opponent, so...